continuing our look into UL Power, an up and coming power source for light aircraft across the range. Now we're standing in front of a BD aircraft, one of their models. I'm Dan Johnson. I'm talking with Robert Helm, the importer for Belgium braced, based UL Power. Uh, Robert, what, what are you doing with the BD folks here? Well, this is the UL 520IS. It's our largest engine. It's 200 horsepower. And what's nice is the, the, the weight. Because it's modern technology, like we were talking about, modern materials, computer-aided design, manufacturing, we're able to build a 200 horsepower engine for 242 pounds installed. And so that's with all the component parts. The only thing that does not include is the oil cooler oil because cooler. different people put different sizes. So we keep that out. And so add a couple of pounds for that, depending upon what you do. OK, so that doesn't really add much. So, yeah, that's a pretty low weight for that much power. And what's that going to do for this? Which air, which BD this model is the BD4. Is their most recent model is the BD4C. And what what's fun for me with our engines uh, it's changing. We're, we're enabling change, both in light sport or light aviation. And not only can we, people are able to design new airplanes because of our engine. And there's some new heli helicopters coming that are exclusively using our engine because of the thrust to weight ratio. But BD is able to take an airplane that's been around for, man, I don't know, when was it in the mid 60s yeah, this airplane came out? And so they're able a to long put time, whatever it is, they're yeah. able to put this engine on it now with the simple change of a different mount and a, uh, I think the cowl is almost identical and we've got the Airmaster electric constant to speed identical prop. to which engine the uh, I think they were using the 0360 0360 Lycoming yeah, yeah. so we're okay. able to basically add a constant speed prop and add 40 horsepower and lose about 50 pounds on the on the weight and improve the performance so that the BD4 uh, C is estimated to cruise about 200 miles an hour, wow. and and for the people, you know, so many people, it's it's been so long since they've been active with this model. People don't realize it's a four-place airplane, and it's all it's amateur-built experimental, and it's 200 miles an hour. Yeah, and that's not bad. And with an engine that'll burn at that kind of performance, what kind of burn will you have? Uh, Fuel burn, I'm talking about. At, at a true 200 horsepower, we estimate 10 gallons per hour. So if you're cruising at 170, 180, it'll be, you know, that much less. We basically, for all of our engines, you can calculate 0 0.05 gallons per hour per horsepower. And so if you look at the power chart, you figure okay. out what RPM you're cruising at, you can figure out the, the fuel consumption. So get your calculators out there, folks, mm -hmm. and you can figure all that good stuff out, too. Well, um, why would they... Why would this, this particular company look at UL Power, beside those reasons that you just mentioned? Are there other qualities that they're saying, other than pure performance at a low installed weight? What other qualities do they like? Well, at the, uh, a lot of people come to us in the booth and ask, what, you know, does this compete with such and such engine? Does it compete with such, or who do you compete with? And now, because we have 97 horsepower at the bottom and 200 horsepower at the top, we almost cover the entire amateur-built experimental market, except for some of the larger, faster airplanes like Lancer, the the RV10, RV14, um, and so so we're having fun, and we're able to go to different uh, companies, and you know the helicopter company I mentioned, it's a two-seat helicopter, and as soon as we talked to him about the engine, he said I can make it a three-seat helicopter, or in the ag configuration because of the weight because savings, of the weight savings power, huh? or he can carry more more chemicals in his ag helicopters. Okay, so that's all good stuff. Now, how long has UL Power been around? I called them from Belgium. I think that's correct, right? Yeah, the, the UL Power, the company itself, the first airplane engine was built in 2002, but the designers of the engine and the actual company designing and building engines has been around since the early 70s building race car engines ah, for like okay. Paris to Dakar road rally races. And they still have an engine that they sell uh, for racing. It's a it's about a three liter engine and they're getting 990 horsepower out of it. <laughs> Okay, we won't expect that on airplanes too <laughs> soon, but uh, I asked them I'm if guessing they could that's taxing an engine rather hard. To I do asked that. if they could design a gearbox for that. <laughs> <laughs> Good humor anyway. All right, so they've been around, uh, well, even from 2004, if we just take that benchmark. Uh, that's already 14 years now, so that's a good long time for a company to be around. When did you get involved with them, Robert, as UL Power? Um, what is the name, of the full name of the company? Uh, for the you? actual name is UL Power. We uh, first started with UL Power North America, but we've dropped the North America and just go UL Power. And uh, Sebastian Hines of Zenith actually introduced me to UL Power. Ah, is that right? Okay. Uh, I live fairly close to Zenith, and uh, I traveled up there and told him I was retired and bored and wanted to do something. And he said, well, we're looking at this engine in, in Belgium. One of his brothers was over there. Ah, okay. And they actually wanted to do a firewall forward kit, but they didn't want their name associated with the importing of the engine because they wanted 
other people to be able to use the engine and it's you know it's still a competitive industry and so uh, sebastian introduced me to the folks and zenith was first to do the firewall forward kit so we did that right about five years ago and zenith is still happy they've got a firewall forward kit for all of their airplanes and they're happy with them and they're a great reference and then i still go up there for their builders workshops and then as time passed you know i meet the just aircraft folks and it takes a while you meet somebody, uh, you know, they want to see you at the next air show a year later, make sure that you're real, and time passes. They buy an engine, it takes them a year to install it or, or longer. So it takes three or four years to really even get the first engine going. And it's a significant change for an airplane manufacturer to put a new engine on a plane because it's their reputation at stake as well. Absolutely. So it's a slow process, but now we've got, you know, Just Aircraft, Rans, uh, BD, Zenith, uh, the the Panther sport performance aircraft and, and so and we're having a lot of fun the, the the community is awesome it's just this is fun excellent stuff well um, I don't want to get into pricing too much but I want you to compare it in general terms how does your engine line and I know you got a lot of different models so not just this one but maybe pick the one you talked about for ASTM or something like that and at least get me in the ballpark are you competitive are you low are you high it's at the low end, we're a little bit more than Rotax, as an example. The guys that are really on a budget complain, and so they, you know, they can do it, modify a Corvair or something like that. So 97 horsepower, about $17,000. And then at the high end, the 200 horsepower is right about $31,000, which is competitive with the new Lycoming. We can't compete with the used overhaul market. Well, yeah, right. But, uh, the, but the benefit is, the true benefit is with this, the uh, one is the purchase price. The direct operating costs is almost always lower than the other engines. And the maintenance, we allow the, the owner builder to do all their own maintenance, and we're going to allow them to do top overhauls and major overhauls if they want to. We have an overhaul facility here in Georgia where we can do the overhaul as well. But if we do the overhaul, typically with a traditional aircraft engine, you budget about half the purchase price for an overhaul. Ours is about one-third, and that's if we do it at the factory today in Belgium. So ah, when we okay, do it here, it'll okay. be less, and then if the builder does it themselves, it will be less as well. But if you, a lot of us grew up in the 60s, 70s, and we tinkered with Volkswagens or motorcycles, and we know how to check the valves and torque different things. The maintenance is really easy. So if you're brave enough and you think you're smart enough to build a plane, you could probably do all of the maintenance on this. And there's several of us in the U.S. that are available for phone calls anytime to, to support. Wix Aircraft Supply has all of our parts, and so you can call in there and you get parts shipped that day, and you've got them, you know, one or two days later. And, and so... It's just, it's a very easy engine to work on. Probably the hardest thing for people to get used to is they're just not used to having an ECU. And so when something's not right, they think it's the ECU. Just going to ask you about the computer part of it. Yeah. You know, messing with Volkswagens in the 60s and 70s, there wasn't any ECU to be dealt with. In the 70s, they came on the scene. But yeah. that was the crazy race car guys, which is the guys we're dealing with. <laughs> well, true. So they were taking ECUs and putting them on engines that didn't have ECUs in the 70s for these races. But the... Uh, the, the, as soon as we help them learn how to troubleshoot it, we find it's a component, like an injector is clogged or dirty or there's a loose wire or something like that. So it's really it's really a very easy engine to work on. Yeah, you portrayed it that way earlier, that is, as engines go, this is a fairly simple one for, for people to deal with in the ways we've just been discussing. All right, a lot of good information about it, Robert. Let's uh, give people a place to get at you more. So they can ring you up in the middle of the night and ask you questions <laughs> and like that. Where do we want to send them on the web, Robert? The website is ulpower.com, and it has the uh, email, phone numbers, and all of that. The best way to learn about the engine, if you really just want to start getting into it and learning it, on the website for each engine, we have the installation manual. You can skip the pages that are easy for you and go to the ECU section, and you can learn a lot. It's about 60 pages, but it's very fast reading, and it's very informational. Great. That's a great idea to send people that are looking into it. More about UL Power, more about all kinds of affordable aviation you can find on bydanjohnson.com.